I don't know if I'm gonna be able to finish all I want to finish in this one night. We got some work to do. We're going to upgrade and rewire the core of my smart home with faster ethernet, Wi-Fi 7, and your most requested change I make, better cable management. While well, trying to figure out, is it worth all the effort and cost to do this? And how does all my smart home tech fare after this transition? This video nearly broke me with a week of intense work in every second of free time I could find. Ubiquity sent me a gigantic shipment of lots of their latest products to check out, including the Toolless Mini Rack and a lot of new networking gear. But none of the networking or computers that I use on a regular basis would really work unless they have good consistent power, which is where today's sponsor comes in, EcoFlow. Now, in my office here, I have a Unify 4 port 10 gigabit ethernet switch to run data to my laptop and other devices. And while my laptop has a built-in battery, of course, if the power goes out or even flickers, the 10 gigabit ethernet switch and the rest of my setup would go offline. And that's where EcoFlow's <laughs> batteries come in super helpful. I've connected my entire desk setup to their latest River 3 Plus battery pack. This means if the power goes out, my whole desk setup or live stream or whatever I'm doing doesn't go offline. Look at this. It works. I love how the River 3 Plus also has a nice display on the front telling me what my current power consumption is and how much time I have left using the battery or charging it. Below my desk, the front-facing USB-C ports are also great for charging devices. Speaking of charging devices, the latest version of the River 3 Plus, called the River 3 Plus Wireless, has a new version of EcoFlow's rapid magnetic charging bank built into the top. This means I always have a Qi2 MagSafe battery pack charged and ready to go at my desk when I'm heading out. I saw this at CES, and EcoFlow recently sent it out to me to check out. It's just as helpful as I thought it would be. Plus, I can use the EcoFlow app on my iPhone to manage my River 3 Plus battery and customize settings like the battery's max charge level. Another thing I love about the River 3 Plus is that it uses EcoFlow's Life PO4 battery technology, which is rated to maintain more than 80% of the total battery capacity for 10 years. And these ultra compact 5,000 milliamp hour battery phone chargers are in a special two pack deal at Costco right now. So if you shop at Costco, go check these out. These are definitely my favorite MagSafe battery. And if you wanna learn more about these MagSafe batteries, the River 3 Plus, or all kinds of other products from EcoFlow, check out the link at the top of the description. Thanks again so much to EcoFlow for supporting my channel by sponsoring this video. I started by building out the mini rack and researching all my different options with these products, as well as installing some of the new Unify Protect cameras we'll get into in other videos. So now we're back here for night number two of this whole project. Now we need to get a bunch of the stuff out of this closet so we have room to work and install the new rack. This meant taking my entire smart home offline as I ripped everything out of the closet to start fresh. So it's already 8.31 right now and I have my internet completely offline, my rack is dismantled, and I don't know if I'm gonna be able to finish all I want to finish in this one night tonight. So we'll have to see. I at least have to get some stuff back online. Hopefully I can get the bulk of the work done tonight. Let's keep going. Then I needed to do what I could to get my smart home back online, at least enough to be usable. 10 p.m and I'm just trying to get things back online because there's no way I'm gonna finish everything tonight. This is why you don't use smart cameras for child monitoring because my internet is completely offline right now, but I can still keep an eye on the kid this way. And yeah, I know these cables need some work too. Some other day. 
I spent the next few days making use of all the little gaps of time, day and night, tying up cables, rewiring things to gradually get more and more stuff into my patch panel and back set up online. All right, so the server closet remodel is coming along. Got more and more stuff coming in the patch panel. So the server closet remodel and just resetting up the rack is coming along well, but there's one big problem we still need to deal with. and It's kind of heavy, which is Cat 6A cable. I have a bunch of Cat 5E and just some cable that's just not performing as it should to deliver more than gigabit speeds to my dining room where I wanna put a Wi-Fi 7 access point. So we need to run Cat 6A to just get faster, better performing cable up there and kind of future-proof that setup. And I'll be running Cat 6A to more parts of my home over time, not necessarily in this video because we're just running out of time, but we really need to get the Wi-Fi going in the dining room, which means we need to get this Cat 6A wired up there. Let's get going. All right, so let's see if this cable my wired actually works. Hey, look at that. RJ45 green light. So let me show you what the server closet is like now that all this work is finally done. So coming in here, we have the toolless mini rack as well as my cable modem to connect to the internet right here. And this is the USW 24 port Pro Max switch from Ubiquiti with the ether lighting. And I love how the ether lighting looks. I don't have too many cables here in my patch panel just yet, but I'm really excited with how it turned out. I'm looking forward to adding more. Of course, you know, there's always room for more upgrades. I want to put some solid uh, pieces here to fill in some of these holes that I'm not using for the time being. Overall, great. Now, going up here, I still have my UDM Pro. That's still the same as usual, but a lot less stuff plugged into it because I'll explain why in just a minute. But then I also went for thanks to this Unify aggregation switch down here in slot number three, that is a 10 gigabit SFP plus aggregation switch. It has eight different ports over there that are all SFP plus 10 gigabit per second ports. Those go then to, you know, from my UDM Pro down to the aggregation switch, and then from the aggregation switch out to the USW Pro Max, my UNAS Pro, the 10 gigabit switch in my office, and a number of other places. So that aggregation switch is really nice. I'm very excited about that. It's really sped up my network. Of course, I have the UNAS Pro down below it. I've heard the toolless mini rack be considered kind of controversial on the internet, which I don't really get because I love this thing. If Apple went back to making the XServe, they would totally make a server rack like this. It's beautiful, again, toolless. These little th knobs you turn are what you need to screw stuff together. So it was very easy to assemble. It's very nice to have in here. I mean, it only being six unit, height is a little bit limiting but I also like how small it is and I also like that it's not very deep that it doesn't take up a lot of space it is a great piece of hardware and would highly recommend getting it I was cheap and bought one that costs about half as much when I first set up my network and I wish I'd just gone ahead and gotten this one because it's just so much nicer to have my network in a nice rack like this now how does everything get here well I've bundled up a bunch of the ethernet cables and you'll see here that I run them with these little cable tie mounts up along the wood here to different parts of my home. And I drilled some holes here between some of the boards, just a few holes, nothing to really compromise structural integrity, but enough to just clean up how the cables go around this area. And then I still have, as I talked about my smart home tour, these lights here from GE, these matter cabinet lights that I just use for and some extra lighting in this area. One of the other things I did is I added some switches around other parts of my network that I already had kind of repurposed some things as well as some that Ubiquiti sent me that then I can use to move some cables away from the main rack and make it less chaotic. 
up here is where I have all my smart home hubs. So this is a Unify 16 port switch that's just gigabit ethernet. It's nothing super fast, but my smart home hubs don't really use anything beyond gigabit ethernet. So, you know, got Lutron, Philips Hue, Flick, Acara, my Home Assistant Homey Pro hubs that I'm still playing with here. And then up here we have one of my main Unify Wi-Fi 7 access points. I'll put the model number on the screen. I can't remember exactly what it is right now. Yeah, it's working pretty well overall. We'll talk more about Wi-Fi 7 in a minute. Coming over here in my office, I have a four port Unify switch with the 10 gigabit ethernet, really just going to my laptop now. But I like having that option here to plug in more stuff with ethernet over time if I need to. So I have two extra spare 10 gigabit ports and one, technically I have the gigabit port there too. So then coming in here to my dining room, we have another one of the Wi-Fi 7 access points from Ubiquiti here. And then we also have this Ubiquiti switch, it's the USW Flex. 2.5 G. So where I'm running that CAT 6A up here and getting 2.5 gigabit ethernet up to this switch, which has a lot more ports than I'm using right now. Just hardwiring in a couple of smart home hubs that make more sense to have in the dining room, like my security system from Abode, as well as of course connection with 2.5 gigabit ethernet up to this new Wi-Fi access point. And so far today, uh, since this morning, hasn't given me too many more issues after I restarted it, messed with a few settings. I think I have this thing behaving now. Oh, and if you remember from my smart home tour, I also have a Sonos Era 300 up here. Really underrated speaker. All right, so scratch that. Actually, this U7 Pro XG, which I've had up here, continued to cause me so many problems. So I ended up taking it out of here and putting back in my U6 LR, which I previously used from Ubiquiti, and this is working like a champ. Now, my same U7 Pro XG down in the basement in the server closet is working great. I've had no issues with that one, and it's really nice to have Wi-Fi 7 with my Unify setup, but wasn't working so well up here. I have my theories of why. I'm still troubleshooting and working on it, so can't say it's been perfect with this U7, especially up here in the first floor. So is this setup worth it? Well, starting out with the cable management, I do see how maintaining the cables better, setting up things like a patch panel is gonna make it easier to maintain and edit my setup over time as I wanna add or remove things. Adding or removing stuff to my old setup over time just got to be so chaotic and really hard to figure out what was where. And I had a ton of pointless cables running between places that I didn't need anymore, but I didn't know that. And so beyond just looking cool, I feel like I might be sold on the fact that the extra time cable management takes might just be worth it in the long run, even though it can be a real pain to set up at first. And it also adds a decent amount of cost to a setup. I'm guessing I spent around two $250 just on cable management in this whole process. Now, what about the faster wired networking? Well, I think if you have a lot of things you like to access on your local network, especially bandwidth intensive stuff, having all of that be at 10 gigabit per second ethernet is just amazing. The file transfer and just interaction speed is so, so fast. But if you don't have that, Regular gigabit ethernet is plenty fast for most use cases. And I don't think gaming is really gonna see a latency decrease by going to faster ethernet speeds. It's only if you move to a different cable technology, like let's say SFP+. Of course, if you have an internet connection that's faster than a thousand megabits per second, then maybe adding that faster ethernet in your home is just gonna give you access to all that connection speed you're able to get to the internet. Now, taking it wireless, is Wi-Fi 7 worth it? Now, earlier this year, I reviewed the Eero Pro 7 series, and of course, Eero has their Mac 7 series as well, just the Eero 7. And my conclusion with a lot of that is that the newer mesh networking systems that support Wi-Fi 7, a lot of the companies, including Eero, have beefed up the amount of radios and backhaul connections that those have. And so getting Wi-Fi 7 for a mesh networking system is really a big boost for your smart home. Even if you're not really into getting the latest and greatest speeds with your Wi-Fi, having all those extra radios and those extra connections for the backhaul between the mesh nodes, that's all gonna be a net win for you 
in your network. Net when, uh, see, never mind. But with something like Ubiquity, where a lot of your traffic is hardwired and your access points are hardwired probably in your network, then you're not really getting as much of that benefit. Yes, as more Wi-Fi 7 devices start shipping, it's gonna be nice to have that extra compatibility in the ways it has with Wi-Fi 7 to navigate signal issues and be really fast. But if I was buying a new Ubiquiti system today, I might strongly consider saving money and getting Wi-Fi 6 to start with and then planning to upgrade to Wi-Fi 7 or newer standards down the road, especially because compared to a mesh system where you kind of have to replace a huge amount of the system just to move to a new wireless technology, with something like Ubiquiti, it's very modular. So you could upgrade one or all of your Wi-Fi access points down the road and a lot of the rest of your network can remain in place. Now, of course, as you saw earlier in the video, you are gonna have to then also consider the faster ethernet when you do move to Wi-Fi 7. So maybe you wanna go ahead and get some of the faster ethernet in place even if you aren't necessarily buying those Wi-Fi access points right out of the gate with Wi-Fi 7. The other reason for this is just, I've seen a bunch of issues, especially getting one of my Wi-Fi 7 access points to be properly adopted onto my Unify network. I had to reset it and readopt it multiple times as I moved it from place to place. I've also had issues where one or the other of my Wi-Fi 7 access points just isn't working 100% and I have to reboot it. And it sounds like Ubiquiti's been making a lot of fixes for their Wi-Fi 7 issues over time. And it's definitely a lot more stable than stories I heard, let's say six months or a year ago. And I'm sure that will only get better as you see this video. But I think if you wanna save a little bit of money and go with Wi-Fi 6 right now, you're also gonna be steering clear of a lot of these early adopter software bugs that are still being sorted out. So in my Eero Pro 7 review video, I talked about how I loved Eero's support for Matter Smart Home Tech. I'm still dialing in all the settings that I wanna have moving back to Unify as my network. So most of the Smart Home Tech stuff that I have though worked just fine. All the Wi-Fi devices reconnected and it's been very stable and very fast. I have had a few devices that I need to work with and reset and I'll be doing that over time as I continue to work out new stuff in my Smart Home. But so far, so good. I think I've nailed some of the Unify settings that I wanna have for my Wi-Fi network. So let me know in the comments below what kind of setup you're running and if you're thinking of upgrading to something like Unify and what maybe your thoughts are after watching this video. Love to hear that. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. And if you're interested in hearing more about my UNAS Pro network attached storage that I just talked about and seeing a bunch of shots of my old decrepit rack as I install that, then check out this video here where I talk more about the UNAS Pro from Ubiquity. And stay tuned because I got a lot more exciting product videos coming about Unify Ubiquity stuff and a lot more smart home tech. Thanks again so much for watching and hope to see you in the next video.